So really quickly, the ERC-2771, um, this is all here to show you, but um, I don't really care about it right now for uh, the purposes of what we're talking about here. So if you care, you can look at it. Uh, it's certainly useful and uh, would highly recommend adding it to your toolkit, but we care about circuits first. So circuits.js, our test, shows you how to work with, most importantly, circum tester. Circum libjs is included here, but we also have that in game. What circum tester allows you to do is test the circuits as you've written them without having to rerun the circuits.sh script. Every time you make edits to your circom file, you will need to rerun circuits.sh to get a different result out of game.js, but not for circuits. Circuits lets you, uh, circom tester specifically, lets you test your circuits very quickly, and once you have a good idea of how they work, you can um, weave snarkjs into there. So there are two WASM circuits we care about, and then also from circumlibjs, we're going to import a mimc sponge construct to hash our board, and an import of the ff javascript library for a finite fields API on the bn128 curve. You don't really need to know too much about that right now. Um, I'd imagine that a lot of people are, are not considerably knowledgeable on SCCP 256K1 past its name and how to do a couple of signatures maybe, but, but you can think of it kind of similarly. So you need to initialize it and wasm tester, which is circum tester. We, we need to get the circum files and it will handle a simulation of, of what they will do in production. So we have a lot of different tests we perform here that are kind of granular and maybe a little bit redundant. So you start with ships and that is going to be five arrays of three numbers, which um, again, if we go back, five by three, and then a single numerical hash. We generate that hash with mimc sponge instantiated on the bn128 curve. I think that's why it has to be uh, awaited. Um, we flatten it down uh, into our hash because our hash accepts just uh, 15 inputs. We take these all as one. And then ships, which is a named import. Um, if we go back to ships hash And then we have to convert hash from its current buffer form to uh, a big int. And then we run it through the circuit tester, the circuit tester, and with the witness we've calculated, and assert that it works. And we do that for a couple of different cases, um, a really basic one, and then ones that are um, a little more pushing what could happen. And out of bounds check. Uh, goes through different kinds of out-of-bounds check, whether it's negative, whether it's beyond 9, whether Z is not binary, and then we check if there are collisions. Yeah, I'm not going to pretend to know exactly where these collide, but they definitely do, if you plotted them out. Same with that. And then here uh, we demonstrate what if you try to lie in your board. So we have one configuration here and we have a different configuration that we're going to put in the hash and we try to lie to the circuit. And this is, uh, unfortunately, there's no easier way to um, assert, but you're going to want to do uh, assertions of failures in your circom code this way. Um, Essentially, if it, it succeeds in this function, you assert false, otherwise you assert it failed. Um, but we have a hash here that is a different hash than the ship that we put in, and we've lied, and it will fail. 
So now we want to do the turn proofs, which are uh, the shots, and we go through the cases of a shot happens on the head, so 0, 0 is going to happen on 0, 0. So for this one, uh, 1, 2, 0 is going to horizontally extend to 4, 2. It's actually going to extend to uh, 5, 2. But it's 5, 2, 4, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2, and 1, 2 based on it having a Z of 0. So 4, 2 will actually score a hit on this. Um, and that'll hit. And that's the default, Z equals 0. And then Z equals 1. Our third ship, which is 4, 4, 1, which means it starts at 4, 4 and goes vertically, is going to go to 4, 5, and 4, 6, which means 4, 5 is going to score a hit. So that is what will work. We've got a miss that's just random, just off. So for this one, we have our ship which starts at 1, 1, and it's vertical, which means it's going to extend to 1, 5. However, if it was horizontal, our, our hit would collide at 2, 1. But since it's not horizontal, it's not going to collide. So we want to put it at 2, 1 to test that our signal mux does filter out the state that we don't want. And we do that. And then it's just the same concept here. So uh, I'm going to move on. These are really simple shot range checks. I'm not going to give them much time. And then this is the same thing as uh, the valid turn proofs, except the inverse. So again, I'm not going to really spend too much time on all of this. But um, you know, it should show you in general how you can test and interact with your CIRCOM code in, in some pretty deep, granular detail. Uh, this is the integration testing. This, And once you're here, we're we're pretty close to home free. Um, there are a few considerations with React. If you can do it in these tests, you can do it in a UI for the most part. So you'll notice that the two imports we have here are Hardhat and Snark.js. I guess we'll really quickly run through what we have here. Um, we have ethers because we use it to instantiate the entire state and provide also mimc, sponge, board hashes, stuff like that. We just pre-prepare a lot of the state that's reused. Um, right here, these are the shots pre-programmed for each player. These will all miss, these will all hit, and we want to use it to advance game state to check that everything happens correctly. And these are the boards they play on. Uh, we import our verification keys, we just export all of that. So given how the turn function drives the entire game state in Solidity, we have broken down uh, a turn into 1-4 Bob and 1-4 Alice that is uh, repeatedly called here as well. Um, let's jump in. So before we just get our signers, we get our game, initialize as described. Um, here we don't care about the um, meta transaction uh, relay, we're just gonna fall back on message.sender so we can just use uh, the zero address to accomplish this. And here we actually go into the process of using Snark.js. And in a lot of our circuit preparation, as well as the PTAL, we use Snark.js from the command line. And you'll see a lot of the other tutorials are working with Snark.js in the command line as well. And I'm sure that they may have their reasons, but um, a lot of the Ethereum ecosystem has gotten very comfortable with JavaScript. So when you're actually doing your proving, you can handle pretty much everything in JavaScript. So we have our input, and uh, in proofs, this is very much considered the witness, but we don't even actually need to handle the witness. It's, it's abstracted away for us under the hood of Snark.js. All we have to do is give it the actual input, and then a path to the circuit proving WASM, and the Z key with which we encrypt our data. 
And then, because this is a test, we're going to just verify that what comes out, which is the proof and public signals. Um, we're going to verify locally with, as well, the verification key that came for the board out of our scripts that the proof is valid. But we want to take it a step further, and we actually want to integrate this on chain. We want to come full circle, and we want to say that we've put zero knowledge on chain. So we have to massage the proof a little bit. And so all we need to do is just, I didn't even write this, this was extended from someone else, um, but massage it into um, what can be understood by Solidity, the um, verifier contracts. So we have our zero knowledge proof formatted as Solidity arguments um, and we'll connect Alice to the contract. We will have her submit a new game. The hash is turned into a big int, which is totally understandable. And then we spread the proof argument array uh, on the parameters as well and send it. And it will revert, the transaction will revert if you attempt to send an invalid zero knowledge proof. So, you know, we, we tested it, we just didn't unit test it. Um, so the next is very much exactly the same, so I'm going to skip it. Opening shot is just, again, we uh, have a non-zero knowledge proof opening shot, and this will hit. And this seems pretty light, right? Pretty easy, right? No, we have a lot. But a lot of this is comments as well. Um, we have our input, which uh, is all this is private, and the rest is uh, public. So. Locally in our proof, we are going to still supply this information. Um, but on chain, we don't have the opportunity to supply um, the hash or the shot. We only actually supply the hit. But we still need to calculate our zero knowledge proof with all this information. So go through, same stuff, same stuff, same stuff. Um, up until the turn, so we point at the game we want to be uh, playing. Since all of Alice's shots will hit, we have this set as true. We then take, uh, since this is Bob's turn, we take his first shot and fire it off and spread the zero knowledge proof. And we've discussed how this all works within Solidity and within um, the zero knowledge proof itself, the CIRCOM, so hopefully it's clear exactly what's going on here. But um, we then, now since it is Alice's turn, do the same thing. And that just loops. So we've gotten to the point where uh, on chain, Alice has scored 16 hits and has fired a shot that will be the 17th hit. And We've now, if it isn't clear, if it's not something that maybe has popped into your head, um, is this perverse incentive that we uh, mentioned before, is that Bob can just disconnect and just not ever put that proof on chain. And really this could happen at any point just for someone who becomes disinterested or starts to feel like they're gonna lose. Um, so our first initial thought was to introduce a mechanism where the user who last put something on chain has to wait only 15 to 20 minutes to uh, receive a response on chain. And if they don't receive a response on chain, there's an automatic forfeit. Um, and that would totally work. That is one solution. But what the dilemma is, is that in the scalability version, we don't even want to be communicating um, during the game on chain. So we need some sort of what we're brainstorming right now is like a verifiable delay function. That'll be something that happens with the consultation of the Ethereum Foundation's privacy and scalability explorations team, I think. There is in the scalability version uh, a little more thought and care that needs to be put into it, and we don't have a clear-cut solution yet, but but we would like to put out a fully production-grade code base that is thought through all of the game theory and can handle 
uh, the wear and tear of, of use. And you will see that this turn works um, perfectly fine. We, we kind of uh, bumped up against the time limit on ETH Denver. So again, the integration testing itself is not superb, but it also is integrated in our front end. It, it works completely fine. Um, let's run it. So the absolute best way if you want a new mnemonic is to do this. And then all we need to do is and there we go. Let's do nano dot env. And we're only going to put in the mnemonic. We don't even need to fill up on any gas because right now we're going to run our tests locally. And now that we've done that, let's try it out. So those were all the circuit tests, not actually a hard hat test. This meta transaction will test that it can perform uh, a zero knowledge computation with SnarkJS and then relay it through a meta transaction. So it's a little novel for sure, worth taking a look at. And then this is slow, but it simulates the entire process of a game. So now we can see that it got all the way through and Alice wins the game sinking Bob ships. So we're going to show you the deploy script um, because there is just a few more considerations to really get it over the line on production, but at this point in the video, what you have seen now is start to finish uh, the process of using the Solidity, SnarkJS, and Circom stack built by Jordi Bellina and his team to use zero knowledge in your own applications. And you really don't have to be as, as smart as the people who built even some of the earlier applications like um, Macy or Semaphore or Tornado Cache. All of those are very experimental. Now adopted for sure, at least Tornado Cache and, and Macy, but experimental academic ideas. And it doesn't necessarily need to be that way. Um, what hopefully is clear is even though it is definitely a lot of work it's it's very manageable so we split this video into multiple parts which is why the continuity is probably a little weird but there should be three videos dropping at once so yeah uh, go check out our discord that's going to be the best place for you to ask questions about this or uh any other builds that you want uh help with or just any discussion around zero knowledge but you can also subscribe to us here or follow us on twitter as we release more Sircom zero knowledge content in the future. So check the description. Links to all the socials are there, as well as links to all of the content referenced in this video. So, uh, yeah, see you in the next one.